request you must. <laughs> <laughs> When we go out and try to convince people that they're wrong with the facts and knowledge, it doesn't work. So the, the truth does not set you free in that sense. But we're convinced this old enlightenment reasoning that simply if you tell people the truth, they will change their mind about things. What you have is decision making based on which values you adhere to in your mind. And then if you're challenged about that, often you then try to justify it after the fact with a rational explanation. There is a, a body of work by um, Shalom Schwartz who um, established um, like a, a values inventory. And basically what his research shows is that in the brain there are uh, a set of around 60 individual values, which I'm not going to go through, but you could basically divide these into four areas. You have the kind of uh, love thy neighbor attitude. So it's uh, values uh, like uh, friendship, love, uh, solidarity. Then you've got another set of values which is kind of about openness to change. This is about excitement, about discovery, creativity, freedom. Uh, and these underlying sets of values uh, correspond to progressive attitudes. And then you've got the other two sets of values which correspond to authoritarian values. One cluster is about conformity, tradition, security. Basically, that fits with the oppressive traditionalists. And the other set of values is about power, authority, status, which corresponds to the social dominators, the inegalitarians. Now, what's happening is that if you look at the narratives advanced by populist authoritarians, they're all about threats to security, culture, safety, um, economic uh, security. Uh, so they're constantly triggering all of the values that, that uh, support authoritarian attitudes. And they're also triggering the inegalitarians by talking about uh, people coming to take your resources or different minority groups advancing in society. Those are the messages that they put out. The more that these messages that trigger these values are repeated, the stronger the links physically in your brain, so we're talking about stronger lines of neurons, they get reinforced and, and the stronger they become. Now the problem with progressives is that because we think rationally, when we're faced with these types of narratives, we answer them head on. And what we end up doing is actually reinforcing the wrong kinds of values. I'll give you an example. Migrant crisis, migrants are causing terrorism, they're coming in in X numbers, uh, and they are threatening our culture. How do we tend to respond to that? We say, there is no migrant crisis, there is no strong link between migration and terrorism, numbers of migration to Europe have actually dropped, and uh, the mi migrants aren't threatening our culture. But what have you done? You've repeated the frame that the, the authoritarians used to activate authoritarian values. So when you're answering these arguments, you're actually sh shooting yourself in the foot. So this, this approach of myth-busting by using facts does not work. Instead, what you have to do is come up with your own progressive narratives that activate the, uh, the progressive values. So the, the kind of love thy neighbor attitudes and the openness to change attitudes. So for example, instead a progressive narrative should be migrants are coming to our society and they are enriching our nation. They are here to contribute. Uh, this man is a father, this woman is a mother, this child is someone's sister. They're just like us. She hates cabbage, and so do you. He listens to One Direction, and so do you. I don't endorse One Direction. Um, but it, so it's, it's showing people that uh, actually this is hope. It's, it's good. It's activating solidarity, caring for others, uh, empathy. It's a completely different narrative to trying to contradict the frame that has been set which associates migrants with, with threats.